the UK national living wage is set to rise 6.2% uh, next April in what the government described as the biggest cash increase ever. The rise, which is more than four times the rate of inflation, takes hourly paid for people over 25 years of age to £8.72. Although Prime Minister Boris Johnson says people haven't seen the pay rise they deserve, businesses warn that a sharp increase in wages will put pressure on companies and they ask the government to reduce costs elsewhere for the firms. And that's how we get to London, where my colleague Julian Olayinka is standing by uh, to bring us up to speed with today's market news and more from the London uh, space. Of course, uh, Juliana, thank you so much. This is how we wrap up 2019 together. I'm sure you saw a little bit of a basket mouth there on our markets, the trading floor today. He's the guy who wrapped up the market for us. Not a laughing matter, by the way. Uh, we lost about 15% year to date. But of course, we can use some, some, some comedy uh, to, to water it, to take it all down. Uh, to wrap up the year. So drill down the London's final trading day for us, uh, Juliana. Well, let's drill down the numbers, uh, Boson. It's nice to share the final day of the year corresponding with you, uh, by the way. And look, you know, even in London, the equities market unfortunately ends the year, ends the decade in the red. The FTSE All Share is down 0.23%. The FTSE 100 is down 0.28%. But on the upside, the FTSE 250, which of course looks at uh, the domestic uh, business side of Britain, is up just a touch at 0.08% in current. The British pound ends high on the dollar by 0.47%, up on the euro by 0.32%, and up on the Japanese yen by 0.17%. I must quickly uh, point out for you just a couple of statistics, um, Boson, and that's uh, the two biggest risers of the year um, from the FTSE 100 and the FTSE 250. On the FTSE 250, the domestic um, equities market, there's a British media company called Future. Over the past year, their shares have jumped uh, by 209% in value. And on the FTSE 100, JD Sports, which I think I discussed with Chimmy a couple of weeks ago, they're the uh, sports retailer. They have been the biggest performing uh, shares on uh, the FTSE 100. Their shares have uh, jumped 134% over the past 12 months. And even though the FTSE 100 does end in the red, over the year, it has gained uh, by 12.5% in value. So not great, but uh, if you look a little bit further out, it's not that bad, actually. Yeah, I think uh, for, for us on this side of the Atlantic, of course, with the uh, basket math and all that, the market finished today 0.87% in positive territory. I think we'll all take that smile on our face and go to bed tonight and, and wake up to a new year tomorrow. But tonight, the UK police are uh, warning about uh, folks attending uh, what you call displays or fireworks without a ticket. What is this warning all about? Is it about security? Well, it, it's security, but also revelers. You know, here in the UK, Boson, you've been here numerous times. Uh, Brits do love to drink. And, uh, you know, the occasion does ask for it because, of course, it is a new year, it's a new decade. Um, and there is going to be a spectacular fireworks display. There's over 200,000 fireworks and there's lots of, uh, I don't know the word, but lots of technologies mm. and laser beams that will be in the sky. And it's a ticketed event, so they've sold 100,000 tickets. And the Mayor of London and the police are saying, stay away if you don't have a ticket. Of course, security is a huge part of it. But also, as well, you don't want drunken revellers, just a stone's throw away from where we are in the dead centre of London, it will be on complete lockdown. So if you're in the area, it will be really difficult to get out. So yes, it's a security warning, but also as well, they just want to make sure that everyone's having fun. And to be honest with you, the best view you get is when you're watching it on your TV anyway. So that's uh, the warning and the message they're giving. I, I'm sure you're going to be sitting on the couch watching some of this tonight. I'm, I'm just guessing I'm not going to ask you where you're going to be tonight. But again... Uh, if you remember, yes, it's the end of the decade. I remember year Y2K, year 2000. Uh, it was all blasts all over the world. 20 years down the line, folks are looking at 2020. Looks like a very decent number, by the way. Uh, but again, uh, let's give the politicians uh, a bit of a soundbite before we leave. Uh, what soundbites are we hearing regarding Brexit 2020? Or is number 10 down the street still quiet about that until January? 
Well, absolutely not. Look at what we were discussing this morning and what you just mentioned, the fact that Boris Johnson, you know, doesn't want to settle with his spectacular win <laughs> and wants to give the lowest paid workers um, in Britain a 6.2% uh, pay increase just shows that uh, we're likely to hear from him um, in months and months to come. Uh, typically, you will hear from leaders um, just before the new year or after the new year. So expecting a message to the nation from Boris Johnson any moment now. But look, of course, Brexit it is going to run and run. The political stagnation that we had for three and a half years, particularly in 2019 with Theresa May failing to get her withdrawal agreement through Parliament three times, that has been eradicated. Boris Johnson has a massive majority. He has vowed to get Brexit done in about 31 days, which is January the 31st. We have heard, um, actually, Phil Hogan. He is the new Irish EU trade negotiator. He spoke to the Irish Times this morning and he said, look, you know, Boris Johnson isn't dead in a ditch from not fulfilling his pledge to leave on October the 31st. And I also think that Boris Johnson is going to go back on his word by um, not extending the transition period beyond uh, December the 31st, 2020. So that seems to be what the sentiment is going into uh, the new year, that uh, it's going to be impossible for uh, Britain to get a trade deal uh, before the end of the year. And uh, rather than leave with no deal, Boris Johnson will have to go back on his word as he's done several times um, and continue the negotiations with the EU. That's all for 2019 from me. I, I know, I know, I know. It's got a very difficult one if you're the one driving the disorderly Brexit train or bus. It's going to be very difficult. The passengers are, are all uh, political, different folks from EU, from the UK and around the world. Uh, it's going to be a lot of, uh, uh, I'm sure, a sleepless night for uh, uh, the Prime Minister there. But of course, he's still going to take some rest. Uh, when he speaks tonight, uh, I'll be listening and we're watching from my couch as well. Have a great day. Enjoy the rest of the day and see you at the other side of 2019. Just about 48 hours from now. They're about 2020. Ah, they just uh, corrected me. I'm still living in the past. Let's live in the future when we meet again on Thursday. Juliana, thank you so much.